Okie dokes, so our next is going to be pagination, right, so... So we're gonna do pagination, right, so... Okay. Okay, okay, so we must create a pagination table. Pagination is actually fairly straightforward to do, so... So we do this... Okay. So let me real quickly have a look at pagination. Okay, so what we want to import, we want to import this pagination. Naturally, every time you import something like this, you want to do this. Right? Yeah. So immediately, as soon as you do this, Let's save. Like right now it's like 100 pages, but you will see that it will immediately turn. It should turn. Oh, whoopsie. I forgot to put it in here. But like, it will immediately turn into 10 pages, as soon as you do this two imports. So... Yeah, so we need to add this here, whoops, yeah, so you see it immediately turns into 10, so default is 10, that's the default, okay, so that's pagination, um, Done. So let's go next and previous. So what do you have in pagination next? Okay. So let's say we want to go to next page. So let's create HR here. And let's create a div. And let's create a button. button and let's go next page so in here we want to do on click like this table instance which is this thing here table instance right dot set page index no actually let's do zero so this is gonna be first page first page and then we're gonna have a second button which is gonna be last page so let's do last page <clears throat> so to get last page we need to get table instance again and then we need get page count call it right so it's a function and then I think we need to do minus one to make it work, right? So this will give us ability to jump between first and last page. So right now we're on the last page. Now we're on the first page. Okay, so now let's look at... Alright, so next previous page. Yeah, so now we need next and previous page as well. <clears throat> so in table instance there is next page and previous page all right so we can use them to to use use them like their functions basically button uh, previous page so it's the previous previous page then on click. On click, uh, we want to previous page will be previous. Oh, we need table instance. My apologies. Table instance dot previous page 
and we call it. So this is our previous page, now we want the next page as well. Honestly, I'm gonna turn it to, into something like this. I'm just not digging how the last page and this thing is looking. You know? Normally we want them to be like this. Okay. So this is previous page and this will be next page. Next page, okay. And then this will be literally next page. Next page like this. So now it's a lot smoother, so we can jump to last page, we can jump to next page, and we can go back to previous page. Now, you will notice a problem in here. You see, you can continue to click, even when there is no next page available. So we need to disable ability to click once it reaches final steps. Right? And there are two functions for this, it's can next page and can previous page right so we want to disable both buttons uh, disabled we want to put reverse and then can get can previous page And then we call it. Oh, we forgot table instance. Table instance like this. Like <clears throat> now, normally, also you can destructure. Like, for example, if you want to do const next page equals table instance like this so then you don't have to put table instance all the time but the reason why I'm not destruction is because I want to show you where the values are coming from right because in the beginning you're gonna be confused as to whether they come from here or they come from table instance so this is why I'm not destructuring for this specific reason Okay, so now I need to copy this, put it into the button. And then this will be next page. Okay. <clears throat> so now as you can see we cannot go back and if we go forward we cannot go forward anymore right so that's disabled now so this is done I'm just thinking what we need to do next I think that's everything in pagination right let me just have a look oh jump to page Right, so jump to page is very simple. You just get um, set page index and then you just jump to it, right? But you will probably want to see what page you're on, right? You probably want to see what page you're on. So let's do, let's do something, I don't know, weird. Let's do UL. And then do Lee. You are on page number. So in here we need to do table instance, table instance dot to get page options, state, pagination, page index. I think it's this. I don't think it's a function. Yeah, I don't think it's a function. Yeah, so it's working. Okay, now we want to jump. Um, 
Well, let's make another one, which is total pages. And then we want get page count, basically this one here. Minus one, probably. Should be minus one, let's see. Yeah. So you see we have total pages, nine. And we're on page four. So now let's jump to page, which is gonna be like super easy to do. <clears throat> we want an input type, let's do number. Whoopsie, number. Um, default. Actually, no, let's do default value. Default value. And then on change. We maybe want to bind this to current page count, maybe. Nah. Well, let's let's try this. Let's try this. And then on change, we want to call. So this has to be E. We want set page index. So this one here we want. And we want to put it as E target value. Yeah, it's probably gonna complain because of this. Let's put it as zero. three yeah so you see as soon as you input something so like one it jumps to five right well let's try to bind it again to the let's see what's gonna happen because I haven't done it this way to be honest with you is it gonna complain Yeah, you see it doesn't change, so. Anyway. I haven't thought about this yet, but I mean, you can just stick to it this way for now. For now. Does it give any errors? No. Because you see, this is not refreshing because there's no re-rendering, I think, happening in here. Hmm. Anyway, I don't want to kind of spend time thinking about it right now because it's not, it's not part of this course, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on. I mean, you can probably figure out how to bind it, right? So we we'll just stick to uh, this for now, right? Okay, so this is pagination. I think everything then. So jump to page, okay, so page size, we want to change page size as well. So we want to do like this. So to change page size, we basically want to create, um, we want to create select field Inside we want value equals to this. And then we want on change equals to um, event table instance. dot set page size 
and then e target value. Basically, this function here, anything you put into it, like 5, 10, 50, is going to be the page size. Right, so... That's about it, I think. Um, and we need to put some options, I think, into it, right? Yeah. So for options, we're going to do... Let's do 10, 25, and 50, right? Map, page size element, and then we want to return um, option key is going to be page size element probably. Yeah, and then we want value to be page size element, and then here we want page size element, right? Hmm. And we probably want oh not page index page size in here okay so value this comes from value so let's just put um, let's do I don't know h4 tag current page size like this and this should do it. So you see we have current page size 10, we select 25, oh, whoops, and then it jumps to 25. Not the most mobile optimized stuff. But you can see it's kind of like working, right? Right? Yeah. So that's pagination done. And that's about it. Okay, so this is this module done. Next is going to be selecting rows. And then this is going to be super easy. Column order and column hiding. It's like super, super easy. I want to do this separately because it's quite, um, it's not straightforward. Take care.